Welcome back to the Pokemon Black No Experience Playthrough. Wee! Last time, um, what did we do last time? Was there a significant battle? <laughs> uh, okay. Well, I certainly made this gym look easy too. <laughs> and that's not too hard. Come on. Yeah, let's just get this. Ah! Uh, okay, you're really not helping your case end when you do that. Seriously, if you want to make friends, don't stalk them and creep up on them just after they exit a building like that. Really, um, you're gonna have people think you're really creepy. And... Hey, 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 his name is Wilhelm, you know? Yeah, interestingly enough, N actually mentions the Pokémon species name. He doesn't count the nickname simply because, um... Also, uh, yeah, this Clink had better trust me, because he single-handedly saved me from a total party wipe. So... Hmm... Well, I wonder if we've seen any of those stones before, hint hint. And wait a minute, so they're dragon stones? Interesting. <laughs> become I love how incredibly mundane it is. I should resurrect one of them and become its friend. <laughs> now this is kinda interesting. Anne is being surprisingly genre savvy here, because this is a pitfall a whole lot of RPG villains tend to fall into. They're like, oh, this world is fundamentally corrupt, I want to change it. You know, declaring war on everyone probably isn't the best way to go about changing the world. That's something a lot of Fire Emblem villains need to learn, really. It never works out, you just get people wanting to kick your ass. And now that you've got the jet badge, we can head back to this house, and these people will say they left their treasure at the edge of the runway. Well, trusting strangers in an RPG with the location of treasures? That's totally not going to backfire on you. So let's go all the way to the edge of the runway. Uh, there we go. That wasn't there before. And we get TM40 Aerial Ace. I really hope those people don't mind if we, ahem, borrow this. <coughs> Oh crap, I do mind. Uh, don't mind me, I was just, um, snooping around in this area. I... I didn't mean to grab that item. I th Oh, I thought it was a Volt Orb! I thought it was a Volt Orb and it was going to explode, so I was going to disarm it and, uh... Oh, alright, you're going to let me use it. Okay, that's fine. Okay then. Yeah, obviously, um, <laughs> these people would have let you keep it anyway. So, we got the team of Aerial Ace. So that's, uh, what, three flying-type TMs in one town? Acrobatics, Skydrop, and Aerial Ace. Aerial Ace, there's actually something kind of interesting about Aerial Ace, in that its English name is incredibly misleading, and I have no idea why they did this. Then again, its actual Japanese name is something probably a lot of non-Japanese people wouldn't really know about. The move is actually called Turning Swallow Cut in the Japanese version. It's actually named after a famous samurai's signature sword technique. A famous real-life samurai, actually. Uh, Sasaki Kojiro. Now, the interesting thing about this uh, particular samurai is that James in the Pokemon anime, you know, the James of the Team Rocket duo, is actually named after him in the Japanese version. Yeah, in the Japanese version, Jesse and James are named after famous samurai rather than cowboys. Though, I can kinda understand why this would be, again, it's just, you know, four kids Americanizing things, but I can kinda understand it in this case because these are probably people most mainstream viewers probably wouldn't know about. It makes more sense than, say, you know, changing rice balls into donuts because why would you need to do that? I mean... I, I'm not going to get into that issue. So, I am going to need a flyer soon. Speaking of flying types, and you'll see why in a bit. But for the time being, let's just continue to talk about Aerial Ace. So, basically, Aerial Ace is actually a slashing move, not an aerial move. So, that explains why, even though most Pokemon that learn it by level up are flying types or birds, well, apart from Heracross for some really weird reason, but okay. Really good for taking out other Heracrosses, though, but I digress. 
most of the Pokemon that learn the move by TM are Pokemon that aren't really flying types or aren't associated with, um, oh yeah, you're getting a hero medal for, I believe you one-shotted something with, um, that, yeah, and you're getting a hero medal too for what you did, um, Yep, you definitely deserve that medal from, uh, you know, the save from the total party wipe against Carmen San Diego. So, yeah, I'm gonna need a flyer, and it's either one of these two. And I wanna put Red Eye back in the party because I'm gonna need Surf. Now, really, to save space, I could have just used Quackpot and, well,. He can learn both Surf and Fly, so that would have saved space, but I'm not really big on HM Slaves, unless they're Thinu. <laughs> sorry. Anyway, uh, what, where was I? Oh yeah, Aerial Ace. So most of the Pokémon that can learn it by TM are more associated with using Blade-type attacks, so yeah, that's the reason. It's actually meant to be a slashing attack, and the only reason it's Flying-type is actually a pun on the original name of the technique that got totally lost in translation, so, yeah. There are actually a lot of moves whose names got lost in translation, but I'll bring up a few more when we actually see them, if or when we see them. Off the top of my head, here's a list of move names that got lost in translation. I'll give specifics if we see them later. Splash. Sucker Punch. Curse. Meteor Mash. Yeah, those are the those are the main ones off the top of my head. So if we see any of those later, I'm gonna have some trivia to talk about. For the time being, we're just teaching a few more things from TM moves. And yeah, I want Thunder Wave on something just so that I've got uh, something helpful for catching things. Eh, I don't really like Bind all that much. Never really was very useful outside of Generation One when it was totally broken. And Mini Turret is in the head of the party for catching stuff. Now, we've got to head on over through the next route. There's one part of the next route that I haven't gone to. I'm not actually going to be there for very long though, because soon it's going to be time for a backtracking session. And I kind of want that Rocky Helmet, because it's one of the best hell types we have at this point. Yeah, just a heads up. Backtracking session coming in the very, very near future. I saved it until now because for a few reasons which will obviously become apparent. I didn't want to have two backtracking sessions, one for fly and one for surf. I wanted to kind of combine them. And secondly, there are actually quite a few Pokemon we can catch in new areas that will be helpful for the next gym. So just a heads up, the next part is going to be pure backtracking. The part after it is actually going to be something new. It's completely optional, but it's a totally new area we haven't seen yet. So that'll be at least interesting. Yeah, uh, again, uh, another heads up. It actually is probably going to take a while before we get to the next gym. By the time we reach the next town, we should be able to get to the gym immediately. But until then, there's a lot we need to cover. So, in the pouring rain, it's actually kind of rainy um, outside in real life where I live at the moment. So, let's go and. Wow, these are. Oh, damn it. I was about to say, these um, elevated walkways are an RC ascent, and then I realised, oops, fell off. <laughs> Just be careful to do that. Again, I find it really ironic that. Um, <laughs> watch on versus watch on. Anyway, I find it really ironic that um, in Generation 3, the narrow walkways could only be navigated by the, with the bike, and in, and in this generation, narrow walkways cannot be navigated by with the bike. And I have a feeling there might be an... Oh, right, yeah. Uh, actually, I think that was rustling grass. Yeah, grass can rustle even in tall grass like that. And I had a feeling it was something interesting. It turned out to be just an Ordino. I forgot what actually is in Rustling Grass in this group. Uh, let me just go look it up for a second. Oh, looking it up, actually, it's just Armafest and Emolga, both of things we kind of already have. Now, I actually missed an item back when I first went through this route, so we're going to go ahead and get it. See, looking over here, we can see, yep, there's an item right there, so doubling back. Unfortunately, in order to get that item, we're going to have to sneak past one of Carmen San Diego's evil people. Now, I could have sworn that he was looking the other way, unfortunately he was looking up. You just can't tell with these. <laughs> I 
You're planning on stealing a whole bunch of trees, aren't you? No doubt for some nefarious scheme. Solosis, eh? Uh, yeah, version exclusive that's not on this game. Yeah, despite the fact that uh, Reuniclus is actually really good, and it's not that I'll be able to use one in this challenge, but I used a Reuniclus a while back uh, in Black and White. One of the first things I trained up, um, EV trained for singles. Naturally, it was Trick Room, abusing the fact that uh, Magic Guard is preventing it from being from life orb damage. And let's see if I can, just because I really, really like um, Litwick, let's just see if we can't give Bernadette uh, a little moment to shine. No, oh, and the Will O Wisp curse strikes again. Sorry, Bernadette, you're out. <sighs> yeah, that was really disappointing. If it had hit, I would have been able to hit it with a double power super effective hex, but yeah. And this move here is, oh great. Yeah, Future Sight now obeys uh, time effectiveness. It used to not obey time effectiveness, but now it does. So if you switch in something that resists Psychic, you resist Future Sight. Future Sight and Doom Desire both used to deal typeless damage before. The plus side is now both of them do get stabbed. They did before. Not that they're the most useful of moves, really, but anyway, speaking of useful moves, though, Psy Shock is a very, very useful move. It's a special attack, but it deals damage based on the target's physical defense rather than special defense. So, basically, it's like a special move that's hitting physically. It's very useful, especially for, you can probably guess what it's most useful for, things like Blizzy that have enormous special defense but really pathetic physical defense. You can completely obliterate them with stuff like that, and normally they're Pokemon that really slow down special sweepers. Oh hey, here's a Pokemon we haven't seen before, at least to my knowledge, Axew. We'll be seeing this one quite a bit later. I know that technically we will be able to find them soon. Yeah, it's still a thing that lore of whenever you see an opposing trainer use a Pokemon, you will be able to get it very soon. Still a thing that rule, but we will be able to get this thing technically very, very soon. But I'm actually going to leave that area until later, so we won't be seeing this thing for a while. It's actually not particularly useful in this kind of challenge because it can't really evolve. Hyper Fang is actually a reasonably decent move. Ah, uh, again. Oh, seriously? Ugh. Damn you, Haxing AI. Ugh. Always happens. They always get out of statuses quickly, or at least aren't affected by them very much. And Dragon Claw, this early? Really? Yeah, that is pretty painful, but that surprisingly wasn't all that painful. I guess Haxu is just kind of weak. Anyway. You did your best at thievery. <laughs> No stealing trees for you, minion of Carmen San Diego. Oh sure, the tree gave you that Aspear Berry, yeah. Yeah, let's just move along and slowly proceed to call the cops. And all that for a max ether, really? That so wasn't worth it. Uh, okay, that was I apologize, that was pointlessly lengthened in this video. There's really only one thing interesting that happens here, and that's coming up soon. But I really didn't want to make this any lo- uh, I kind of- well, I had a perfect place to end this video, and in this house I always forget which is the one who heals you. It's this lady by the TV. It's usually the old lady or the old man who heals you. Oh, speaking of walkways, we're gonna have to dodge a couple of clowns soon. We got a call from Mum here previously. But, um, we don't have to worry about that again. So, as we head off, oh, rustling for us. We are now in Twist Mountain. Although we won't actually be here very long, but when we take our first few steps into this new area, so we can, well, at least we can read the sign. Doesn't that sign apply to everything? But the moment we try and climb this ladder, rival ambush! Yeah, you wouldn't think we'd get by without one of these. I just realised that there's always a rival battle after every gym in this game, not including the second, but they made up for that by giving you two rival battles right after the third. So yeah, um, if you think back, after the first gym there was Cherub, after the second, that's the only one that didn't have any, and hey I see you've got an unpheasant now, too bad it kinda sucks. Anyway, 
There wasn't any rival battle after the second gym, but again, after the third, we had two. After the fourth, Cheren again. After the fifth, Bianca. And now, Cheren again. And we kind of know how we deal with electric types after that last gym. Fortunately though, Cheren has a much more balanced team than that gym, and he has nothing to double weak to electric, so... Yeah, this is gonna be a little bit tougher. This is probably actually a harder battle than the actual gym leader. Uh, yeah, whatever you say. Of course, I'm pretty sure Brohood Strength kind of beats everything by this point. Seriously, uh, if you're in a challenge like this, I highly recommend catching a Zeb Striker because they're one of the strongest things you can get at this point. And, oh, I see that he's not even evolved his starter yet. That's... wow. Um, yeah, interesting. <laughs> Okay, it's one level off of evolving, but kind of disappointing you still haven't evolved your starter. Most generations' rivals evolve their starters sometime now, and if you're playing um, a regular playthrough, you'll almost certainly have your leftovers. Wow, that's pretty cool. I think he had that before. Though. You'll probably have your own starter fully evolved by this point, so it feels a bit disappointing to not have theirs. Don't worry, the rivals are going to stop disappointing us next time. Unlike May and Brendan, the most disappointing rivals in the history of everything, who never fully evolved their starter. You know, I seriously searched all over the internet for some way to rematch May even one more time after the Elite Four, just so that I just felt so disappointed that... You're gonna use a healing item, aren't you? I just felt... So oh no, you're not, okay. I just felt so disappointed they didn't even fully evolve their starter. I was like, after that battle at Lulico Department Store, I was like, oh come on, that seriously can't be the end. That cannot be the last one. That was so anticlimactic, but sadly it was. Speaking of anticlimactic, let's see if Bernadette can take on this Simisage. I'm guessing not really. Oh, Seafoam. You've had Seafoam for a while, but it's a very good move. Oh, yeah. Definitely not. I'm so sorry, Bernadette, but yeah. See what I said about Litwick not being useful in this challenge? You can kind of see why. Uh, too shorted by even not very effective moves. Here comes me. I really should have called this thing Strawberry or Baby. I don't think I got around to baby this challenge anyway. But at least... Oh, wow. Oh, okay, that was a critical hit. Oh, great. You're going to take me out as I, as I come down, aren't you? Yeah, you really don't have to use anything but Siege Bomb. Come on... No! And... Uh... Okay, uh... Okay, let's just hope... Uh, I'm gonna need to do some more shopping soon, actually. Let's just hope that the next Seed Bomb does not take off half my health. Come on... Oh, that's good. That should give me just enough time to do this, actually. One Seed Bomb. That should leave the... Yeah, there we go. See, you're actually doing quite well, me. I'm really not sure how to pronounce this name, because it sounds really anticlimactic or anything like... Uh, I don't know. I just think of a silly way to pronounce this. I just sound weird in my head. So I'm not going to. So, okay. Well, I, I, I don't... I know some smoking people might say something, but I personally uh, am of the anti charity team because once I actually tried uh, keeping track of my win percentage online, it almost drove me insane. I actually could feel myself changing into a horrible person, so I actually decided not to. It really scared me, and thank goodness this thing doesn't have Limba, otherwise that would have been really embarrassing. Anyway, uh, I'm not saying that competitive players in general, I mean, aren't are just horrible people. I mean, I'm a competitive battle, so yeah, but just... If you focus on winning at all costs, most people like that tend to be jerks in real life. And I'm not really going to say much more. Because this is a pretty sensitive issue for me. Yeah, yeah, I know, I've been tormented. Oh, Torment is going to stop me from using... Oh, wow, okay, I'm kind of... Okay, I either need to use Gear Grind here, because I don't want to get rid of my special attack boost by being forced to switch out, so... Gear Grind... Oh, great, you've got a Citrus Berry, don't you? And Citrus Berry, okay. And 
that's not going to do much. Yeah, I've kind of run out of things to say here, but... So that was the Cherim battle. It's actually, I thought it would be harder. If you'd fully evolved your starter, then maybe we'd have a slight challenge on our hands. But as it stands, yeah. Not really. Sorry, Cherim. I mean, if you had more Pokémon, most rivals tend to have more Pokémon in this. In fact, uh, a lot of major boss fights don't have that many Pokémon in this generation. I don't think, well actually, I know none of the gym leaders have any more than three. Which is strange, because in Ruby and Sapphire, you had gym leaders who had five. I guess they thought that was just a bit too much. I wonder if X and Y is going to change that. Uh, hi. This has certainly been the episode of Unexpected Stalkings, hasn't it? Where are you? Come on, show yourself. Stop creeping us out. Wow, you're up there. Whoa! <laughs> and there, Alza pulls off his trademark cliff jump. One of the things that makes him just so incredibly awesome. Yeah, the cliff jump becomes kind of a running thing with Alza. But, still. Yeah, we've already met Alza before. So, once again, the champion is, uh, yeah, meeting us occasionally during our journeys, just like back in... back in pretty much every generation, starting with two. <laughs> uh, don't you think you're taking it a little bit overboard, Sherrod? <laughs> wow, you're... Uh, wow, um, I... I think you might need to see a psychologist. <laughs> Seriously, you're... Or is it psychiatrist? I'm not entirely sure. But anyway, you, you need therapy, that's the thing. Yes, it's how you use your strength that matters, not, um, the fact that you're strong. And we finally, how fitting that it's during rain, get HM3 Surf, the one HM that's actually spectacularly useful in battle. And we can also travel across water, blah blah blah, we can see a whole bunch of new places, blah blah blah, but really, I'm just glad we've got a really great water move. Now, if they gave you this before clay, things would have been so much easier, but they didn't. And Sharon's still on an existential doubt crisis. Though again, I still kind of like that they're, you know, kind of examining, um, I want to be the very best mentality in more detail here. Oh, I'm not so sure about that. So, if we go up here, we find a hiker there. Now you think, there's no way the game would pull a cheap shot like forcing you into another battle while after that one, is there? You're wrong. That guy is a trainer and he will battle you if you go near him. So, yeah. Don't want to go up there just yet. For the time being, I'm going to teach Red Eye Surf and I'm going to call it right here as next time we take a bit of a detour and revisit some sites of the past. Don't really need skulls anymore. So, now that we have Fly and Surf, let's see what secrets we can unlock with all our shiny new HF moves. So, this is Big Clinky signing off for now, and I'll see you again next time. Hi-ho, me, away!